YouTube. Look what we have right here. It's a box and we're gonna open it for your viewing pleasure. Today we're doing something possibly a little bit different and it's because we ran ourselves out of a special receiver, but we'll talk about that later. So if you guys are new to the channel, this is Brian Phillips RC and we are gonna open and unbox this thing. We're gonna do the unbox build and radio setup. If you hear beeping, it's our chargers. Oh yeah, it's a P39 Racing Bird Amazing from FMS. So we're gonna get this thing out of the box. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna do the radio setup a little bit different today because these things come equipped with reflex, most of the new ones. Sometimes like with this Viper, we ended up putting in a regular spectrum receiver with AS3X and safe. We show you exactly how to do that in the Viper build. And you guys might wanna follow along. If you're looking how to pull a reflex out, if you prefer to have AS3X and safe, oh yeah. So this is the 980 millimeter P39 Racing Cobra. Beautiful yellow livery, has retracts, powerful brushless motors, 36, 48, uh, 770 kV motor, and it's combined with a 70 amp ESC. Good Lord, what are they doing with this thing? I, it's gonna be really fast, I bet. So this thing flies on 4S, and you know, I bet you it's gonna be a lot like the crazy Voodoo P51. So as you can see, this box has the bottom that's exposed. So we're gonna cut these things right here. Boom! This is gonna be super exciting. And as we've talked about with the crazy P51, it was lightning fast and really insane. And we put in some crazy batteries. You remember when we tried to puff those packs? <laughs> that's right, we did do that. It was like those drone batteries that were too small. So we're gonna try to use the right size battery in this. They're calling out uh, 2200 to 2600 4S. So we're gonna try, because we use smart batteries, as you guys know, we're gonna probably favor toward uh, 2200 on the bigger 50C or maybe 100C or whatever, 50, 30. And then also we're gonna see if you can get a 3200 4S, 50C in there. Those ones happen to be fairly new, which is nice. Sometimes the new packs, you know, you get a little bit of puff on those when they're used for a while. And uh, let's go over the specs real quick. This does come with the Reflex V2. It's definitely going to give you the wingspan of 980 millimeters, which is pretty good. Motor size, we already talked about. Now they're saying the ESC is 80 amps. So I don't know what to listen to. Uh, and there's your call out, 2200 to 2600. I think I might've said 2400, my apologies. So I'm not sure which part of this box we listen to but we're just gonna, actually we're gonna put this over here today because we have lots of receivers out and we'll get to that in a minute so we can help explain why. Um, we are out of air 620, so we'll explain what our choices are because we've been wanting to do one this way for a while. Okay, beautiful. Let's unpack this thing, oh yeah. Painted tips, I like that. This is a 10.58 which I believe, is that the same size that they use on the P51, the smaller one? I think it is. I don't remember. So there's a spinner here. Okay, this spinner has the large port for the gun because in the real one, there would be a gun that basically goes where the pilot sits, underneath the pilot, I think, between the legs potentially. So that's uh, power between your legs, right? <laughs> so we've got bags of goodies in here. These things are useful for throwing down the hallway. And then there's lots of what the heck is going on with this. <sighs> and evidently somebody changed their mind. <laughs> so I'm the not design. sure what happened there. My guess is this must be a V2. I can't tell, it doesn't, doesn't say, say V2. Actually. Well, evidently somebody changed their design. Okay, so we have the elevator assembly and looks pretty straightforward. Pinched hinge, nice bright yellow, good good covering. Uh, looks like there's just a little bit of shine through on the paint, but it feels nice and light, which is good. And carbon fiber reinforcement plastic where they join together, so that's always good to see. And then how do you tell which way's up, Brian? I don't know, good question, that's how you tell. That's probably down, but who knows? Depends on how the linkage comes out of the wing. Here's your wing joiner for the tail. I am gonna try to forget this. I'm just warning you right now, camera crew, you gotta keep me accountable. Okay because these little things are easy to forget because some of the planes don't have them on the tail, some of them do. Okay. So, 
FMS has been doing this on the last two planes. Why are the control arms and linkages not installed? I don't know. I don't like that. So what I do like is the fact that we have nine gram digital metal gear servos and looks like good retracts. Very ugly, very bad match on color yeah. here. But it's not the end of the world. And as you can see, huge giant number. I don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean. Probably means some super significant aviation thing that I have no clue about. But anyway, nice dihedral on there. Obviously ultra fast planes with dihedral sometimes. Who folded this manual? Look at that. Not only did they fold it's it, like they folded it, it like four times. <laughs> they must've been like, oh, let's pack it extra bad for Brian. Okay, there's our manual. FMS does decent manuals on their newer stuff and on the older stuff. Yeah, they exist. So, but they're better than most of the Chinese manuals we get. Okay, let's pull the fuse out. Oh boy, that is beautiful. Ooh. Lots of foam on there. Looks really nice. I like this. Mm -hmm. This is pretty. And by the way, yellow planes, I like the way the pilot looks. Simple, good size head to canopy ratio. And as you can see, we've got the simulated inlet on the top that is not simulated. That is a real inlet. So that's pretty sweet. And what else do we have? We have the rudder. And you'll notice a marked not included linkage adapter and we'll have to put that in. So the camera crew and I are cringing about that right now. So let's talk about how this canopy comes off. For those of you at home that are thinking, is it really that big a deal? Well, it is when you're planning on trying to hurry and get a plane in the air because the weather is slipping away from you. I can't tell that how that goes. Come off? I don't, I don't know, sometimes the glue gets sticky. Oh, there it goes. Okay, oh. yeah, I thought that's the way it came off. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, look at that. That thing is huge. That is a gigantic ESC. Did they forget we're gonna have a battery Why in here? Why is there a EC5? Oh, jeez, they would. Ah, oh, they did this on another plane too. That is so annoying. It's because they use an 80 amp ESC. That's like the smallest plane ever for an 80 amp uh, ESC. I don't understand that. Well, I mean, I understand that because it's really fast. Um, 80 amp ESC, five amp aspect. Holy crappers. That is crazy overkill. Well, I guess we'll see if it's really overkill or not. But I gotta say, I have a sneaky suspicion this thing is going to be cruising. And look at the motor, it's huge. This is a 980 millimeter size class. And I think that's the same motor they use in the 1.2 meter, like P51. It was the P51, you're talking the Voodoo, was a 1.2? No, that was a 1.1. This is less than a 1.1, it's a 980. Goodness gracious. So I think that's from like the 1.5 meter. I don't know, I, I shouldn't speak out of turn there because I don't know that for a fact. All I'm gonna say is, why aren't the linkages installed? <laughs> I say it's a low piece count until you count all yeah, of Yeah, low piece count, and then you get linkages. into the nut and bolt sack and you're like, oh my goodness, we're gonna be here for three weeks. You're being very attractive today. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so, also we have nothing on the bottom here, nope. so that's good, so we can go ahead and continue on to the next step. Now, we mentioned something about receivers. We're gonna probably wait until we get to the receiver step. I think we're gonna go ahead and do the build portion first because we might be doing that for a few weeks with all these linkages. So I think what I wanna do is we are gonna get our plane stand thingy, which is like this. We've been using this for years. There's nothing super special about it other than the fact that it was a gift from one of our subscribers who also sent us some screwdrivers. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Tom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tom, thank you. You've made our lives better. Still. We appreciate it, yep. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this in here. You can see the reflex is equipped right there. Obviously, you've got this here, which is totally sweet. Oh, maybe it's a drive shaft. I can't remember, there was something weird about the way, I think the gun actually did sit between the legs of the pilot, I'm serious. And then the engine must be under him too. It's a mid-engine plane. You see where the exhaust pipes are? Yeah. I don't know, that's just so weird to me. So the P38, the P39 is just a different plane. And so I think for that reason, people are gonna find this to be, I don't know, some people aren't gonna be all about it because they are used to more of like the F4U Corsair, the P51, they're gonna like the T28s, they're gonna like the Spitfires. And the thing is, as you get into the hobby, you get a little bit deeper into it, you start getting excited about some of these different planes, the ones that are maybe not another P51. Well, all I'm gonna say is I like the P51s too, so I have no problem with that. 
but I like these ones too. And so I've really enjoyed kind of broadening my horizons. So if you guys have had everything else, this is a great place to be. Um, okay, so we're gonna set that back down. Why don't we go ahead and assemble the tail real quick. So we've got this joiner. We're gonna go ahead and slide it into one side or the other. There's like a clippity do hickey. Oh, it just goes through and then screws it. That's this thing, see? See, there it is, okay? So pretty straightforward stuff. This bowl linkage is gonna go down, pass this through the hole, and then we're just gonna pass this through. I'm definitely hitting some resistance on the tail there. And I don't know if it's just because it's not quite wide enough. Well, we'll see on the other side, hopefully. Let's right, slide this on. And we'll see how that goes together. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I feel like maybe there was some glue or something we ran into. Let's try slide this in first. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. That's what you gotta do first. But you guys see what I'm talking about where it's getting squished here? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna grab this with my fingers hard and just give it a little squeeze. Okay, now we're gonna pull this back apart. Lots of strength there. You are gonna want lots of strength if you have a super fast plane. So that's definitely a good thing. Nice tight fit, screw together everything. Now you don't have to worry about gluing this tail, so that's always nice. Although as we've had on a few of these models, we're getting a lot of crushing on this tail and I do not like when they crush like that. See what I'm talking about right mm -hmm. there? So is there a way to avoid it? <sighs> to be honest with you, I'm not sure that there really is, but uh, you could lubricate it with like water and uh, some soap and it might slide in there a little easier. But as you can see, our tail feathers are attached together to one another. And now what we just need to do is we need to not get our ESC to pop out, but it is popped out. And we're gonna get some screws in here. These things are not all the way seated. So we're gonna have to work to seat as we tighten down. So let's go ahead and check the instructions and just make sure there's no glaring mistakes we're gonna be making here. Pull the reflex stuff. Uh, before updating the program, please apply power to the reflex unit using ESC. Okay, great, amazing. Okay, so if you could just read these instructions to the people right there, right there, camera crew, um, go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's over here. There's the English stuff, okay? This is what we're looking into today. We're gonna see if we can use the PPM pulse width module input also known as SBUS. I'm not sure it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. If it does work, great. If not, we're gonna be using 11RX six channel. Okay. So anyway, we're not gonna dig into it anymore. Let's see what they say about these screws. Uh, those screws? Those screws. Okay. I don't know. Is that what goes on the tail? Yep, that's where we're at. Okay, cool. So let's take this minute to go through our nut and bolt sack. Hmm. Here on Brian Folds RC, we really concentrate on the nut sack and bolt sack because we know that when you guys see a nut sack that's this full, you're like, oh, good Lord, that's gonna be an S. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Exactly what I thought. So, whoa, whoa. Just throw those so in that is a, well, I think I assume that's a pedo tube, but I guess I don't know. We'll glue that in later. We got some linkages. These things should screw in. Okay, well, at least they screw in. We don't have to glue them in, that's nice. So it looks like two in each bag, maybe? This one's got like a bunch in here. I don't understand why there's only two and two. So these must be, um, you know, like ailerons and flaps, I guess. I don't know. And then this one must be rudder and elevator, possibly. There's only one inside of here. So that's why I go to the rudder and elevator choice. And then this also gives us access to this, these screws. These are the two we need. That sure looks like what we're used to. Phillips and Phillips, and they have a sharp point, so that should make it easy to put on there, okay? There's also these two little Those ones little here. tiny ones. These little ones go to this, okay? Oh, yep. yep. So okay. that's where that's gonna go. Agreed. So these screws are Phillips. I'm thinking like a number zero, probably. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this handy dandy screwdriver set that one of our other subscribers got us. Not Tom. Not Tom. Tom bought us another one, which we've been using for a long time, but then somebody else stepped in and said, hey, we really like these screwdrivers, try them out. So we did, and not affiliated or anything, but it was a nice gift. Okay, so we're gonna slide this in. 
And, oh, that's nice. It pulls the wing in because of the type of oh, screw. Plastic. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so that feels good in the hand. This, by the way, is a uh, Newell fin, uh, three millimeter screwdriver. Mm -hmm. So whatever, whatever that does. So they seem to be working pretty good so far. We've had some trouble with certain random screws here and there, just like we do with our other screwdrivers we've been using for years. But they are nice because they've got a nice grip to them and then they're hollow in the back here. Come on, come on. There it is, guys. There it goes. Okay, very good. That's gonna really hold that tail on nicely though. Okay, so it's in, I feel good about that. If you don't feel good about something in a build, pause, figure it out, and then go from there. All right, now, oh good Lord, there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on in this wing. Yeah, there is. Cause look, we gotta cut this. And then all that stuff inside. Is going through. It's going through right where the battery's supposed to go. Well, so I, I don't know. Sometimes when these planes, I, I think that the, the engineering, they, they forget. Like, <laughs> hey, there's gonna be a battery in here someday. We need to leave some room for them. Now, if you've ever built a kit or an ARF, then you'll understand how complicated that can be. And to be honest with you, that's the type of thing that I expect to be right when I get an FMS E-Flight. You know, some of these uh, good brands that we work with, you know, Arrows, and ironically, they're all made by pretty much FMS. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, okay, well, all right. So we have a little mixing board here. Ours looks like it's broken, so that's not cool, but it's just a case that holds it together. So whatever, I'm not super worried about it. I've never had a problem with one of those before, but if you get into yours and it's messed up like that, you might want to just give it a quick look. And when I say broken open, what I say is, what I mean is, see, this thing should snap shut. Yeah, it just needs to be snapped. Seems fine now. Okay, so now that is gonna suck to wire. I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> so here at Brown Phillips RC, we like to unbox, build, and radio set up these planes to help you guys so you've got a helping hand on the way through the assembly. Um, but at the same time, some of you guys are not gonna need any help at all. Ailerons, flap, gear, okay? So then this is what? What the heck is this? The ailerons flap gear. So what, what, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Man, this is such a mess. I'm pretty disappointed by this here. That says gear. gear. Yeah, but then like, okay. More gear? Aileron, gear, flap, what? I'm so confused. Why is this not plugged into anything? It makes me quite nervous because it, is that supposed to be plugged into something? Is It's just an extension cord. Look, why is it in there? Why is it plugged in? Oh. Hmm. See, flap, flap, gear. Um, that looks like probably retracts because they have the super small lines and then ailerons. Like, I don't understand what the heck that's for. Unless that goes to the nose gear. Oh, that would be so weird. Would it pass through the middle like that? That is. It would be weird, but I mean, honestly, they just need them to tie together, so they don't really care how they tie together, I guess. Well, I guess we'll find out on that, folks, uh, after a bit, but if we have problems, we'll kind of have that as a mental reminder of what we ran into, okay? So I'm just gonna run this out as though it were part of this whole apparatus. And so I'm gonna do it in somewhat of a tidy way so that when we pass it through, we don't have all sorts of grief doing it and just taking and putting some straight memory on there instead of those weird like zigzag memories. Okay. So now in order to set this on, I'm gonna move this huge kit out of the way. I'm gonna slide this so I can reach. Then all this gigantic mess of cables is gonna go up here. Now we have a reflex involved so I wonder if that's got something to do with it, camera crew. I don't know. Uh, I don't know either. Yes. So if you're new to the hobby and you're trying to figure this stuff out, you're at the right place. You're gonna figure it out right alongside us on some planes, on other planes, we know what's going on already because maybe we've already built the plane a couple of times or once or whatever. And other times it's just a matter of, you know, we've got maybe a little bit extra experience on it or maybe we have less experience, but a little bit more current experience. 
And that's what we like to do here on Brian Phelps RC is help people along so that they can get in the air because after all, what's the goal here? We want people flying, we want people enjoying this hobby. We wanna grow the hobby, we wanna get people in the air. So the easiest way to do that is to help show you exactly how to do all this stuff. And that's what we do here on Brian Phelps RC. If you wanna help support the channel, buy the stuff from the links. We got four screws here. As per customary, we have an extra from FMS on the long and an extra from FMS on the tail feathers, okay? Customarily, we get extra, extra screws from FMS every time, 100% of the time, with the exception of one plane, that, that one. one. <laughs> I don't know why the 15th anniversary, maybe it was like a turning point for them, like no more screws for you. Oh, look at that. What's a two? Two millimeters, millimeters. This is very sloppy right here. I don't understand that at all. See that? Very mm -hmm. ugly. And the problem is that'll be seen. Now, granted, it, oh, I got a little bit excited there and just kept torquing it down. But to be honest, look at that. Boy, that is biting so early. I didn't think it would yeah, bite so does early. Seem really very fast. soft foam, folks. So you can take that or leave it. What we do here on Brian Phillips RC is we try to teach you what's going on. So you can see if a plane is of the echelon of quality that you'd like to see before you spend all that cash on it. This plane, of course, is not an exceptionally expensive plane, uh, but at the end of the day, everybody's got different budgets, different budget requirements, and different tolerances for spending on airplanes. And some people have different tolerances for how many planes they can bring into the house before their wife murders them, and you might be on that boat. So we're here to help you come up with great excuses like there's snakes in the basement, don't go down there. I wonder where your number is. How many planes you can bring in? <laughs> before, before the murderings? <laughs> I don't know. So next thing we have to do is get this spinner installed. This spinner is got this weird thing on the back and it looks like it's damaged actually. That looks damaged to me. What the heck? That is so weird. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's like dented in. It's like melted or something, but whatever. Okay, so there's these little holes here, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, which makes it really easy to put that on. That's I don't know why they have the extra ribbing on there, probably in case you switch to a three-bladed prop. But then your that was just That was just a hilarious fit. joke, guys. Okay, so now we're gonna take this. This has an octagonal back on it. So that's gonna slide on to the shaft, like so. And you're like, but Brian, you didn't put the spinner on. That's because you need to put this on. This allows the spinner adapter to screw into it. Okay, so we're gonna run this in and then what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to figure out what screw we're supposed to be using so I can torque this on. Uh, looks like we have a number of screws left. We have one, two, two small ones. We know where they go. See, that has got to be it. Why yep. do we know? Because we customarily we get an extra. Sorry, didn't mean to talk over you. That's okay, I said the same thing. So I think we're gonna go with two and a half millimeters or two. Yep, two millimeters. So if I have a two millimeter and I wanna tighten this, I'm gonna just slide that shaft through. I'm gonna hold this not getting cut because they are sharp. Now some of you are probably cringing thinking I can't believe you would install a prop on a plane that's not totally set up, that's unvetted. I agree, there's a little bit extra danger involved. Just please use your best judgment. I don't want you guys to get hurt because I give you bad advice. This is sheerly, simply for the camera. Otherwise we'd take our time. We don't want you guys to have to wait. They're already long enough videos as it is. Okay, so without further ado, that plane is technically almost in one piece other than the puking electronics, okay? So what we're gonna do is it's looking really nice too, it I must say. It does look really cool. But we are definitely not done by a long shot. And then this thing here, let's go ahead and get that thing on there. This is gonna be the first thing to break off folks. If you weren't already aware, the antennas, pedo tubes and the sort are always the first thing to come off. They have now taped down our access to actually do this. So oh, that's annoying. And you know why I don't want to cut this camera crew? So that the decal doesn't buzz? China glue. China glue. Here it is. China glue. China. If you're ordering this plane from FMS through our links, thank you. Secondly, if you're ordering this plane through links, get yourself some China glue. Do it. I know my china glue. That's it. People are gonna expect it to say china, china glue on it. Yeah, well, sorry, you, you don't get that. 
Okay, so we're gonna cut this, we're gonna cut that. China glue is awesome glue, and why is it awesome? Because it comes from China, And obviously. it works for everything. For everything. Ever. Everything, putting your planes together, fixing your car. Okay, that was just a joke, folks, about mm -hmm. fixing your car. Yeah, we've never done it that. It could be a Chinese car. We've fixed a lot of kids' toys. We have, actually. But no, this China glue is definitely not CA. What this is, is it's a mucilage-type product and mucilage is what we used from Hobby King for years. And then we started getting tubes that were dried out. And I said, screw that. I'm done with that product. And we haven't used it pretty much ever since. And it actually worked really nice for a long time. But what you wanna do is get that coated nicely and then let it cook, cook off, bake. Okay, I'm gonna stick that down there and just let that sit for a minute. I'm not even gonna spread it with a Q-tip. I could clean my ear now, finally. Great. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave the chain glue out, just in case. We're not even gonna put any of the control rods on, but what we will do is put these horn adapters things on. Things. 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 Okay. So we have to put one on the rudder, so let's do that since I'm standing here, or sitting, or whatever you wanna call what I'm doing. There was only one in this kit, in this particular bag. So the reason I'm taking this one on first is for the simple fact that there was only one here. It's already got the ball installed. Okay, so this is gonna receive a screw. So what you do is you stick the long skinny thing into the hole here and enjoy, um, uh, and then do it like that. You'll notice it's not painted, ugly. Yeah. Don't like this new maneuver, FMS. I, you know, gotta admit, not a fan of doing this step. There's, there might be a reason for the occasional, but having entire planes oh, where they're like no. all missing, I don't understand it. Okay, so this uh, three millimeter Phillips is pretty awesome for this size. So I got that held on my fingertip. I'm gonna use this, slide the screw through, and then I'm gonna come in here like this and pass it through the wing. I gotta say, I am not a fan of having to build these However, some of you guys might be a fan of building these things, and if you would like, I can give you a laundry list of other tedious duties that I will gladly relinquish to you. I am looking at this thinking, that looks backward. Does that not look backward? It looks backward. No, it's that it only has such a long of a screwdriver or screw, and they want this on the outside surface. That's why. But it does look a little counterintuitive. You'd almost think this, this you see this well, it's deep. Mm -hmm. It is. See how it's deep? Yep. Compared to this, it's on the surface. It's just because they only have such a certain length of screw. Typically, the manufacturer would provide a longer screw in this type of application. Not a wrong thing, just a different thing. And, and here's the truth, guys. We've been working with FMS. We've done enough FMS planes that now we can clearly establish that they do a good job of engineering this type of thing under most circumstances. Just because I'm annoyed that I have to put them on does not mean it's a bad thing. It's just that Brian's annoyed. What is it they say about Brian happy, Brian happy what? Happy Brian, happy life. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. not right in most other households, but we'll go with it. We'll go with it. <laughs> okay. I knew there was something like that. Oh, it's happy, happy wife. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it's it supposed to be. I was mistaken. Mm, yes, you have been for uh, a number yeah. of years. We're gonna get that screwed in there straight. You see how, see how it's walking off at an angle? See how it's wanting to go boop? That's because the head is slipping to the side. And what you wanna do is when you slip the head next to the opening, you gotta get it to actually line up and go between the two opening sides. And there, you see, I, I don't think we're in it. We're not in it. In fact, I can tell we're not in it for sure. And so what I have to do now is I have to try to get that thing backed off and it's very difficult to do this with the camera crew in my face. So she's gonna go behind me on this side and try to film. Because otherwise I can't see myself. I'm really having a hard time getting that screw out. See what I'm fighting? Yes. It's just in an awkward spot, really. Oh, we gotta go get the screw, the China, China, oh. China, wait, China, be patient. Patient with me. Okay, see, now it's all sticky tacky. It just sticks really good. So we're gonna stick that right where it belongs, which is there. Then we're gonna just fold it back shut and be done with it. Oh yeah. Now I don't know if that arrow is supposed to go up or down. I guess it's going up. 
I'm but sure I you could probably. I think it's going up on the box. Oh, really? So we'll see. If oh, yeah, know. it is on that box. Although that doesn't mean it's right also. <laughs> I know. That's the way they built it. Okay. So I'm going to try. This is like try number one. seven. So please don't bump me or anything while I'm doing this. Because I am having a heck of a time getting this started because of the weird angle. See, now I overshot the other direction. Please just go in. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I believe I got it that time. How do I know I got it? Because as I turn, it's wanting to push back and resist the tip of my screwdriver. And when it tries to spit the tip out, that's when you can be frustrated. When you know you're done? Depends. Okay, we have an elevator and a rudder. We're gonna have these for them, but we're just gonna leave them right there. Okay. Why? Because if we put them in now and we start to move in those around, you might actually jab them into the side of your foam. Because they're not going to be landed yet, we want to be a little bit careful. Now, I got to admit, compared to some of the other manufacturers that we've worked with, we do, we do actually appreciate the fact that these are screw-in style versus glue-in style. Yes. Some people like the glue and screw, and for those uh, people that do, watch this. I'm going to just wipe this on Very the thorough. countertop underneath so I can take off the rough edge because they had a little bit of extra plastic. And I went a little bit too aggressive there, but we'll be fine. Okay. Why did they put the elevator one on? Uh, because, because it's molded into that. I like, don't know. That guy got fired. So, thing. Yeah, We're not going to show them. We're not going to make yeah. them suffer through all of these, are we? What? Through all this? Yeah. Really? You think this is sufferable? Is there a right way Goodness and a gracious. wrong way to do those? Um, I'm, I'm actually trying to figure that out right now. Oh, okay. Because you see how those go the same direction? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. I'm going to open the other side. Watch this. I'm gonna open the other side, and probably my guess is they're gonna go the other way. Notice the asymmetry in position. This one's pointed that way, this one's pointed this way. Watch this, pointed this way, pointed this way. That is how you accomplish flaps going the same direction without having to use a reverse servo. For those of you that are new to the hobby, yes, there are two directions of travel on a servo. One direction is this way, one direction is that. Simple, one's reverse, one's forward. Typically, they'll have a symmetry because these will be pointed the same direction, but then the output is reversed on one side versus the other. Whereas ailerons are going the same direction and the cabinets are out or the cabinets are in, similar to what you see here. But these will go opposite directions by default and these will go the same direction by default because the inboard flap, okay? Flaps go down the same direction ailerons always operate opposite direction, okay? Unless, of course, you're making them flaperons and then you have to have separate controls, at which point they can be reverse or forward servos. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Did I say that articulately enough? Yes. Okay. So I can't tell which way this needs to be, to be honest. I'm just looking at them because they just came out of the bag and I'm looking at them and these are both shooting that way and these are both shooting that way. Therefore, what I've learned is that there is no alternative. If they're all going the same way, correct. then they're all the correct way. The same. Yep. Yes. Do we agree? I agree. So the only other thing is that you could take the screw out of this and move the ball to the other side if you wanted to. I don't think it's necessary, and definitely this is the right way. The ball should reach to approximately the hinge point, okay? That's almost always true on almost every install is that the geometry states you want the actual manipulation point to be at the point of the hinge or as close as possible. Hmm. Sometimes that's one of the biggest mistakes that builders make, including myself, when we are building kit model planes because we put those things and they end up wherever the heck they end up. My grandpa used to always do this. He was notorious for like, oh, I wanna make it look cool so I put it this way. No, wrong. Sorry, mm -hmm. Grandpa, in heaven. Um, that was wrong. Hopefully. It's okay. He doesn't care now. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, he doesn't care now. So, anyway. All right. So, we've got a screw. We've got a plate. We're going to put the screw through the plate. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip this plane uh, like that, maybe. Okay. And just see if we can get started. Because, remember, this is the awkward part is just getting the first one started. Because then everything kind of holds together, right? See that? I don't like the way this is going. I'm going to have to resituate the plane a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Now it's started. Okay. 
I'm gonna get the second one started and then we're just gonna go through the tedious process of tightening these screws and we are gonna pause for that. All right guys, look, we've got two different length screws. I just wanna point something out. I'm gonna put them together with this little cover thing. Longer, shorter. The longer ones need to reach through a deeper penetration point here on these surfaces. Now on the tail, you don't have that same problem. So I'm just gonna take a longer screw. It's not much longer, but just to give you an idea, you're talking about a couple millimeters, okay? So I'm gonna lay this stuff back down and I'm gonna show you on one that you do need to reach in with the longer screws. I've already started that side on all four of them, but I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this one and get this one started here. If I can get this one started, that would be nice. Okay, so once we find the hole and we start turning, you can kind of tell when you get purchased because it'll start squishing the foam. Yep, squishing the foam. So then we'll take one of the shorter ones and just show you that we can reach and that'll help give you confidence that we did it right because sometimes we do things wrong and we don't mean to mislead, but we do want to show this at least once having been successful. Yep, squishing the foam. And then this one here, same thing, squishing the foam. And as you can see, that one kind of lined up weird. So we'll do the second one. Sometimes you get a little bit of a misalignment in the foam. All the rest of them were perfectly square. Not impressed with the colors on these things. I've got to say they are very ugly. That did not purchase. See that it didn't purchase. Now, I don't know if it didn't purchase because we don't have proper alignment or if that screw just happens to be just a hair too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and reach down here. I'm gonna squeeze this pretty hard actually. There we go. I can feel the plastic that time. Look at that. See how it's biting? That's what you gotta do. You have to actually verify and then you can see the pinch hinge design. You'll wanna work these a few times on each surface as you go through. So we'll continue and come back in a minute. So I ended up with two extra screws. I don't know how I ended up with two extras, but I did. Okay. See, two. So I'm gonna put those two extra screws in the pile of extra screws. Someday we'll build a house out of those. I'm sure they'll come in super handy. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's talk about straps. Uh, whoa, that's weird. My safety label fell off. Oh. Hmm, wonder how that happened. Bummer. I'll just have to be careful not to cut my hand off. Um, okay, so what we've got going on here is we have the uh, mid-grade straps. This is not the lowest quality. It's not the highest quality, but do they slide? They do not. That's They're gonna be terrible. just in the foam. What? There's no like wood tray. Well, the wood tray may be underneath. Oh. So, but just to be clear, this is definitely not gonna be one of my favorite styles. Um, when they don't slide, they're very incredibly difficult to use. And tight planes that are hard to get batteries in don't get flown near as much. You'd be surprised. So anyway, now we have to somehow figure out how the heck to adapt all these wires together. Cause I'm sitting here looking at this giant mass and I'm thinking, good Lordy, Lord, Lord. Phew, what a mess. Hmm, okay. All right, so this, this is ch channel 5B. What the heck is that supposed to mean? Channel 5B? I think they mean gear. Because that goes up front, obviously. The rudder attaches to the other one. Okay, so this one clearly goes to the rudder connection, okay? So where is rudder? Where is rudder? Is the one that we were passing up here from the wing? Okay, yep, there's one. So these come from the wing and it looks like, what's this one, aileron? Okay, so aileron goes to flap. Okay, well, camera crew, can you hold that with one hand? That's the gear, that's the gear. Yep. Right there, how do I know it's gear? Just because I remember. And I think it's strange, so I don't even know how the, exactly that's gonna work, but that goes up to the front. This is the aileron. Um, okay, so there's rudder. This is throttle. This one is, oh goodness gracious, what a tangled mess. <sighs> okay. All right, here is, ooh, S bus PPM mode. We might need that today. So I'm gonna put this up here in this uh, obvious cable holder. <laughs> okay, so this is ailerons from the reflex, which generally, Oh, you know what? If we do it the way we need, this is crap. That comes from this side. 
I can't tell which one's input and which one's output. Ugh, that's a bummer. We'll put that there. Oh, the throttle goes to the other side, so that's inputs. That's how we know. This is an output, okay. So you have this nice tangle here, so I'm just gonna untangle this right now. Okay, so we undid that. This one is the rudder connection from the front to the back. I am just reattaching it. Okay. And I guess since that's just kind of like otherwise in the way, I'm just gonna put it over here in this nice cable holder, which is most definitely not to hold cables, but we are using it that way. Okay, throttle again. Okay, what do we have here? We have elevator. So elevator is gonna go here, like in this cable holder that's not a cable holder. And then this one here is a throttle. That's gonna go yeah. And then this is, this one is a rudder. Okay, so I guess, I guess we'll just stick it in here with the other one. Then what are we left with? We're left with all the schmutz that comes up from the basement. Yeah, yeah, there's something there. There she is. Now I'm gonna slide my fingers in here and I'm gonna try to pull this back under and out. Okay, so there is aileron. Okay, so you're like, but Brian, what do you do with all those things? Well, these come up from the wings, so they're gonna be coming out. Oh, good Lord, how do I plug those in? I have to turn this model a little bit and I think, how in the, God's name, am I gonna do this? Oh, here we go, aileron, aileron. Look at that, fancy dance. So we're just gonna snap those two together all snazzy like, oh, don't you know. Okay, so, oh, I did it backward. Oh, don't you know. Get out of there, get out of there, guy. Don't do that, guy. Okay, here we go. So we got brown going to the top. See how it's all disorganized? That's why I struggled there. Now I can see brown is brown. Brown is to the top in this case, okay? So that's good. What else do we need to hook up? That's already hooked up. Gear needs to go to gear. So gear needs to go somewhere. Where is gear? I can't tell where gear is yet. Hmm, that's probably, okay, so there's channel 5B. Hmm, I gotta get this Velcro out of the way. Yeah, I don't know which way that goes. That's a tough one. So we're gonna go to the flap. Where's the flap? Do you see flap? I most definitely don't see it, but you know what, I bet it's back there. I have to get some forceps. I just can't oh, reach yeah, that, unfortunately. Up there on the top wall, kind of. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to get in there with some forceps, guys. These are forceps hemostats. If you didn't know what those were, we're gonna use the bent tip ones more often than not. This is a good tool to have. You don't have to have it, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you do. Okay, and yes, we're trying to film, so I apologize for blocking your view. It's just kind of the way it is, unfortunately. So this is aileron. So this one here is rudder. So I'm actually gonna undo this from my little fancy dancy clip. I'm gonna put rudder back there. Okay, so these ones are done. So I can actually Slide those down here. Get those out of the way. Goodness gracious. Oh, that goes to the back. Nope, that is not tenable. I cannot see, hun. How I can't in either. the heck are you supposed to do that? I don't see where the gear plugs in and I don't see where the flaps plug in. Oh, that would be because the gear and flaps plug directly to the receiver. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. So even if we use the Aspas PPM mode, that's not gonna work on this, is it? Because there's nowhere, well, can you plug that into this receiver thing? I don't know if you can, because if you can, I don't, you'd have to plug it into the top of the reflex. So we can't even do it the way I was thinking of. Because to do the little satellite S bus PPM, you have to just You have to be go. able to just, well, you have to be able to pass out uh, the PPM output. And the PPM output, which actually, hold on a sec. Mosquito. I'll, right. I'll uh, 
I'll say it was a mosquito. Was it a spider? Yes, it was. Gross. It was a wolf spider. A wolf. wolf. It was a wolf spider. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, if you're going to use S-Bus PPM, which is what we were trying to use, you have to at least be able to support the connectors. The problem is you can't support the connectors in this environment because if you come back over here and look, there isn't anywhere to plug it in on this Reflex V2. Ooh. So normally flap and gear become additional channels in this event and therefore you can't actually plug those in, which means my original plan, which was to use the S-Bus or at least try it, is gonna get out the window. And so what does that leave us with? Because we're out of air, uh, 620s, we're gonna be using this Lemon RX. So we're gonna do that today, and then it'll be just like every other one we've ever done. So it should be quite simple, okay? So this thing is a non-stabilized receiver. It's six channels. Uh, we'll link to this and the 620, because we know you guys usually probably go for the 620. In most cases, these are ultra light receivers. They're really good. We've had very little problems with them. They do come with a piece of double-sided tape, but you don't have to use that. So my recommendation is because these antennas can come undone, whenever you're all said and done, you just get that situated and go ahead and stick it down somewhere. Okay, I don't remember what pin goes to what. I know that one of them is bind and then one of them is channel one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's all sorts of other good stuff, but this one's not even marked at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna guess and check, okay? So guessing and checking can get you into some trouble, as you know, um, but there are ways to energize a receiver without actually being in a dangerous condition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at that with an XBC battery checker. And an XBC battery checker, of course, is going to give us the capability to energize our receiver in order to bind it so that we can, and you don't have to do it this way, we're just doing it this way because I don't wanna have the prop and everything hooked up uh, while I bind this since I don't have the pin out and I don't wanna look it up because I'm too lazy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this thing ready to rock and roll. And I'm gonna grab, this is just one of those random things that we'll teach you here on Brian Fultz RC. We'll just spill all these millions of cables out and all I'm doing is looking for a male to male or well, female to female technically. And we're just gonna energize this sucker and I'm gonna guess and check, guess and check, okay? Why are we guessing and checking? Because I can. So the minus is marked on there so we can see minus uh, plus and then signal. So now if I have this right, it should go into bind mode when I turn on the servo test. Ha ha, yes. So I have it correct, I believe. And what I need to do now is I need to bind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my transmitter and I'm gonna be able to bind without even having this in the plane, which is gonna be nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on my transmitter. We don't need that sitting so close. We don't need that there and we don't need any of this stuff here right this exact second. Looks like we had our Viper the magnet from the canopy stuck. So, first things first, we have to go cancel them back and go to add new model. And we're gonna go to create and we'll pause while it creates, it takes a second. Okay, so we are normally gonna do all sorts of other stuff, but what we're gonna do very first is we're just gonna walk right out in an acro. We're gonna click down to bind. And then we're gonna go yes. Bind. And we're gonna Okay, so we're gonna try that. Now I'm gonna go bind, binding. We are super close, so this may be a problem. I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna energize it again. Okay. Okay, so you can see there's no flashy light, which means we did actually go into bind mode, I believe, okay. So we are gonna go ahead and go like this. So there we go. I'm just at zero. And really, I kind of don't wanna be on the potentially throttle channel. I'm gonna go like to this channel because then I know I'm not on the bind channel or I'm not on the throttle channel, okay? 
So mine failed. So now we're just going to hold this up and see if we can get it to work. Bind failed. Okay, so now we ran into this the other day. I'm just going to go further away. It bind failed again. Okay, so if it bind failed again, here's what I'm going to show you how to do. This, I believe this is DSM X, but if it's not, what you can do is you can go to frame rate, automatic, force DSM 2. Now watch this. Huh, so we're still having a bind issue. I'm thinking out loud for just a second. If I had this hooked up backward, then I don't think it would cause any real problem because the ground would be reference signal versus ground. I'm about 99% certain that's correct, okay? So we're just gonna go a little bit further away. We're gonna go back to bind. Bind failed. So this is something we've run into before, but not recently. So we're gonna try it again. We're just gonna go further and further away within our dwelling until it goes. Still bind failed. So we might need to, ooh, unless the bind port is on the other end. That would make sense. That would make sense. Okay, and again. Hmm. All right, we'll pause and come right back. All right, so come around. I got it to work. All I did was I put my antennas in a diversity configuration and I just happened to get this in the right spot. So I'm just gonna go through. I also turned it back to DSMX. Oh, that's because I'm not in bind mode. <laughs> so I'll go back to bind mode. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug power and then plug it back in. So the flashing light means bind. And this is about where I was. So go back to bind, see if it works. And as you can see, it's just like, you know, I tried about 20 times and I don't know what the difference is. So you'll just have to guess and check a few times. And it could be that we just had more distance and this is pretty close for this. So one other thing too, I just wanna show you that frame rate. Um, normally it's automatic by default, but you can force DSM too. This one did do DSM max 22 milliseconds. So it's still in bind mode. So let's just walk a little bit further away and let's go bind, bind. Nothing. And we'll just sit here and try it a few times. It'll eventually do it. And you'll have to take my word for it because it does actually work. But it's kind of annoying and I don't like having to do this. This is part of the reason why we've gotten away from using the Lemon RX all the time because it was nice, but then it led to questions like this. So we're gonna pause and then when we get it, we'll show you so you can see it work. I think I might've figured out why this didn't work. I had a dead battery or near dead battery, discharge battery, if you will. And now I've got a full charge battery. I don't, I've never thought about that. Ha! We had low voltage going to the receiver, so that's why I didn't want to bind. Okay, so my bad, not lemons. Um, so my apologies, I'm gonna pull the bind plug off and just show you, uh, now that we have that done, then you can actually uh, function servos and things like that. So let's just grab any servo. This is just a nice little utility. We use the XBC battery checker all the time for weird stuff like this. So I'm just gonna like stick this in here and I'll just like plug it into the rudders. Is that the input or the output? That's the input. Okay, so if we plug the rudders in to whatever channel we want, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna show you that it does function, okay? So remember, something. That's all that matters, okay? So now that you know that that works, it's kind of handy to have that tool in your tool bag. Now we're bound with our transmitter and we've established what the pinout is just by doing that step. Um, so it is nice to know what's going on. 
Uh, it's easier to get a manual. Sometimes it's easier to just figure it out. And in this case, I just figured it out. And hopefully you guys understood what the heck I was doing. Um, anyway, if you didn't catch that, I was trying to bind using a discharge battery. So the voltage from the BEC, which is pretty small, that's a servo tester, was not strong enough to give the amplitude for the signal for this to work, okay? So now that we have this plugged in, what we need to do is go back to our radio setup and we'll go ahead and make our profile. So our profile is obviously not an acro. So we can go cancel, go down to system setup, disconnect RF, and then we're gonna go back to where we would normally start, which is model name, okay? So this is where I'm gonna type in the model name, which is the P39 Cobra. Okay, so we did P39 Race Cobra instead of racing because we didn't have enough digits and in the size class we always do that. Okay, then aircraft type. This is where you put in one aileron and one flap. It's got a normal tail type. And then I'm gonna select an image. I don't think, <clears throat> don't think there's a P39 in here. Hmm, what? No, that's the FW190. But it's a fast plane, and so I think we should go with like, that's not gonna be a very good match, is it? No. I think the closest match might be something like, you know, I don't know. That's pretty close. Okay, good enough. Uh, flight mode, we don't have to set up on this because we're using reflex, and then spoken flight mode, we're not gonna set up because we're using reflex. Okay, so now the first thing we wanna set up is throttle cut for safety, so we'll make sure that when it's back, it's on. We can check by looking at that. See the throttle stick's moving, but it's not changing the output. When we shut off the throttle cut, you can see it's working. When we turn it back on, we're safe, okay? So then we wanna set up dual rates and expo. So because we have the reflex, it might be a little bit different, but I'm gonna set it to switch F. The first setting is gonna be five. Then we're gonna have 10. And then we're gonna have 20. And you're like, Brian, it seems like you always do this the same way. Exactly. We start from the same point and then we work from there. Okay, so we start in the middle. If we need less expo, it's, we want it more touchy, we go up to the top. If we want it less touchy, we go to the bottom. And that's gonna bring the rates down and increase expo. That's a pretty big change actually, okay? And then what we do is we just carry that to all three of the main primary control surfaces. So in this case, we're dealing with pitch. Do we just do rudder for yaw? Oh wait, that was the other yeah. Then we drop the rates, same exact setting. We're gonna start in the same setting as well. And then basically what happens is you have a plane that has very basic choices to get you up in the air and help you get back down if you have a problem. And then what would happen is you would set your median point. Let's say that on um, the ailerons, it was just a little bit too touchy and you wanted to deaden the stick. So you got it to the ground. Now you would make 20 your middle. So this would become 20. And then this one will become 40. Okay. And then you might drop the rates down a little bit even still. But I'm going to go back to my standard. Okay. Which would be 10. And we always start there. And then along with the stabilizer, this complements the stabilizer as well. Okay. So we have throttle cut. We're going to have to certainly reverse things of the servo setup later. Flap system, we really don't know yet, but I'm going to set it to switch B for the moment. And you'll see that as I do that, it's moving auxiliary two. And the flaps are not moving because there's no change in state here. I don't want them to change states because we don't know where things are going to line up. So I'm going to set it to minus 100. I'm going to set it to plus 100. And then I'm going to make sure I'm in the neutral setting. Okay, and this is gonna be fully parked flat. So actually that's kind of where I want it, but because I don't know where they're gonna go, I'm gonna go to the middle. And that prevents from overdriving the servos into the wing surface, okay? Now I'm not gonna set my elevator correction and I'm gonna go ahead and set my speed to two seconds, okay? Now I'm gonna walk out, I'm gonna click, scroll all the way down to system setup, disconnect RF and go down to channel assign. And I did not unassign this, so I'm gonna inhibit that connection. Now, if you go to monitor, you can see that as I change my flaps, it just changes my flaps instead of changing my flaps and auxiliary two when I move switch B, okay? So we'll walk out, we'll scroll down. That should be pretty much everything for now, 
But the addition is, sorry. Now we can see where everything lands. Okay, so we have throttle on channel one, then aileron send elevator rudder, gear, and flaps. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're gonna have one additional channel that's needed to control your stabilizer on and off. Well, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna set it and we're gonna forget it using one of these functions. Now we have three positions on flaps, so you could do it, but it's slow. And then we have two positions with gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with gear because it's just super easy to find and hook up. So that'll be our fifth channel. Okay, so on here, where's our fifth channel? This is our bind plug and programming plug. Also, auxiliary two if it exists on the stabilizer one. Then this is, but this is only six channels, so it should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna go here for the gear and here for the throttle, okay? And that's gonna energize our receiver, and then we can go ahead and get this thing fired up. So the first thing I wanna do is plug in throttle, and where is throttle? Throttle should be coming off of our receiver, or excuse me, off of the, uh, in this case, the reflex. Okay, so throttle's plugged in there, that's where we're getting our BAC juice. So once we hook this up, then that could spin but it shouldn't spin. And so we'll just be a little bit careful. And because we have a large connector, I'm gonna use a 5000 4S just to test it because it's gonna be easy to test this way. We've already bound, so I'm gonna go throttle cut, stick down, and make sure we're in a safe spot. Camera crew is gonna protect yourself by being over here. We're gonna lay this battery in. This is our first vetting of the system. We only have throttle hooked up and we're only gonna have gear hooked up but we also need to hook up mode to gear. And so why don't we do this? Let's hook up flap, elevator. So I'm gonna bring this over here. That's gonna to need to plug in. We don't need gear. We're using the gear plug right now, but I need to see another response like on the rudder. Okay, so the rudder is gonna to go to what channel? It's gonna to go to channel four, okay? So that's gonna be right next to the one we're plugging in. And then let's plug in some more. So we've got them all plugged in, elevator. Elevator is gonna go to channel three. Okay, so I'm just kind of paying attention to how they're tangled here. So I can untangle as I go. It makes a big difference on the cable management end of things. Okay, so the brown is down in this case because I have the receiver upside down and that's on channel three. And you're like, how do you know that, Brian? Well, because we know that this is the bind plug and then these are the rest. And then this is what we're looking at as a reference. So channel one is throttle, then ailerons and elevator, then rudder, then gear, then flaps. So we can actually hook up flaps too, because we can get to that right now. And I'm just gonna pull this down just a little bit and flaps is gonna go here. Okay, and then ailerons are here. And then there's our S bus PPM mode. Okay, so we're gonna go slide this out. All right, so this one here is gonna to go to ailerons, which will be the second set of pins. Okay, it's actually the, the third because this is the bind plug, it's unused in this application. And then this one is gonna plug in where the gear go and then shortly after we set it, we're gonna go ahead and flip them around, okay? So that's just gonna get unused at that point. Okay, so we'll plug this in. So we'll be able to change mode with the gear switch but we just need to be mindful. If the prop spins, it's gonna go this way or that way. Presumably it's gonna go this way if it's set up right by the factory. I like to start my planes a level if possible, just in case there's some sort of a setting that gets set. In this case, I don't believe that would happen, but I just wanna get it as close as possible to where I'm comfortable. I wanna make sure I know where that's gonna spin. This could be quite powerful, so I'm gonna have it so I can secure the model. Throttle cuts on, sticks down. We've double che checked now. I'm gonna plug this in, it's already bound. Okay, so just hanging tight, listening for beeping. Okay, so the ESC's armed, the receiver's armed. We have no controls hooked up yet, okay? We also notice that the prop is not spinning. First thing I'm gonna do is shut off the throttle cut and it didn't start spinning. The second thing I'm gonna do is try to spin it. And it is in fact spinning. Throttle cut works, throttle cut's tested. So now we can trust the machine so that we aren't gonna hurt ourselves. Now, the other thing we wanna look at is we wanna look at, okay, is this thing auto leveling? 
Now this prop is, we can trust it, we have a slow flash on the receiver. Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch what happens when I change my gear. Now it goes to solid. So there's fast flash, slow flash, and solid, or it's off. I can't remember, but it doesn't matter. We're just gonna test what the output we want. We're gonna test until we get that, okay? So the output we want is stabilizer, not auto leveling and not off, because I want the stabilizer. How do we tell if it's stabilizing? It's stabilizing the yaw axis, okay? Now, if I were to flip this upside down, We're in auto leveling, and that is with a solid light. So now I'm gonna flip the switch. So now we have a faster flashing, like a slow flash. And guess what? We're gonna go halfway, no big corrections, rudder correction, elevator correction, aileron correction, but no huge meh, 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 when you go past the halfway point. So now that we have established, we want the stabilizer on, okay? We have already now established that. So watch the flashing, watch mm -hmm. the flashing. See this, watch, boom, still flashing, correct? Mm -hmm. Now watch this power cycle, camera crew, protect yourself just mm -hmm. in case. Now I'm gonna plug it back in. And what does it do? It'll go to. As soon as it initiates, it's gonna go back to flashing like it was before. Yep, it's fast flashing yep. right now, but then it'll go. Just Once like it's done with stable uh, setup. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so that's gonna memor it's gonna memorize the condition it was and it's gonna stay there until you plug this back in and change the pulse width modulation. So that's something we learned really early with the reflex because you don't have to then have the channel. That is a very good utility. Now I can just plug in my gear and see what the gear looked like. Okay, so brown is down. Okay. All right, so now we can actuate the gear. Oh, we have those gear. Woo, that was close. So there's the gear. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on its own two, three feet. We're gonna put this out of the way for the moment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start checking the control directions. Okay, so that's correct, which is pretty cool. This is gonna be, who knows? Who knows, because we can't see. Why can't we see? Well, I can definitely tell you that the gear are in the re reverse condition from what I want, so I'm gonna Scroll back over to regular, click, go to servo setup. I'm gonna go to travel, reverse, and I'm gonna go to gear. Now I'm just gonna click this and flip the switch simultaneously. That way my gear don't cycle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the plane up on its belly again. And that's gonna give me the ability to finish the rest of this install, which again, it looks bad right now, but it's not gonna look bad when we're done because you see all the wires spilled out everywhere. We are not quite done. And we're gonna be working for a little bit longer and it looks like we're probably not gonna to fly tonight because it's just way too windy. Plus it's getting dark, okay? So we're gonna drop this down like that. The battery can fall because we have plenty of room, okay? So what do we have to do to hook all this up? First of all, let's, let's feast our eyes on the landing gear here. Let's see what we've got here. We've got rock hard tires as usual. And there's some milling that's been taken off of here and here so that they close over the retract. Nice sturdy landing gear, but indeed rock hard, no spring to nothing. I mean, you better grease your landings with this plane. Otherwise she's gonna wanna bounce like crazy. But they are gorgeous. Okay, great. So now let's talk about flaps for a minute. Flaps are gonna be a weird one because they need to be, when these are down, that's where they'll go. When they're in the home position, the normal flight mode, that's where they're gonna be. My switch is in the opposite condition. So let's go ahead and work through that real quick. So again, we're in the reverse screen. We can reverse the flaps here, or alternatively, you can go in here and change these values here. I think for the sake of ease, we'll go to servo setup, travel, reverse, and then we'll flip that. So now you'll note that I have my full landing flaps deployed and here's my normal flight. Now keep in mind with FMS planes, you can generally run beyond plus 100, minus 100 in the spectrum arena. Zero is center, plus 100 is one side, minus 100 is the other side. Now you can go plus or minus 150 or plus 150 and so you get more sweep. 
just depending on the servo. So in this case, if we have enough sweep, then we won't play with it. And so I generally leave them at normal unless I need to change them for some reason. Like if I want barn doors, I want those suckers pulled all the way down. Usually what I do is see if they bind first before I waste my time. Also, let's take a look at these linkages for a minute, okay? We have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, and they all appear to be the same length, but sometimes appearances can be deceiving. So what I wanna do is I just wanna double, quadruple, quick check. All the threads are exposed the same amount, so we're gonna start with these, okay? So how do we know how these go? This is in the normal flight mode. Oh, and the manual will actually hopefully tell you where to plug these in, okay? So we're just gonna look real quick. You'll notice we don't refer to the manual much for anything, okay? Until this step. That's because they're usually pretty much the same. Okay, so this is where they show, connect the aileron control rods. Where? Do they not have it? Mm, Do they not have it? Go further back. We haven't seen CG yet either. Nope, I don't see it, hon. So it looks like they at one point had them in the center, the center hole on the servo, and then obviously where the bowl was already installed. So they don't tell us that. They, they don't have them laid out everywhere. Mm, okay. Oh, so they're showing how much throw to do. I don't measure throws. I do it a different way. Okay, so far so good. So here's how you can find your replacement components. And okay, you well, just get the pickle hole. this is your programming guide for your ESC, which is pretty cool if you wanna try to change that. Okay, so in that case, we get to guess. And so when I guess, I guess that we're gonna be in the outside hole and we're gonna see how that aligns. Okay, if we need more throw, so that one was going this direction, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure if that, that's kind of at an angle. He needs to go the other. He needs to go Sign. the other way, I think. Yeah. Let's see if we can, you know, I may have to put them in the middle if I can't get those things through. Okay, right, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. That good. Okay, so now the way these things work is you brace them and screw them on or screw them off. And usually what I do is I go to the one on the outermost surface and then just align these. You see how I'm holding my fingers to level that out. And then I just hold this until it gets to where I need it. And then knowing that we have half turn increments. Okay, we wanna make sure we have enough threads on there. Okay, so with that centered, it's pushing it up a little bit. So I wanna go back half a turn. That's pretty dang close guys, look at that. Nice smooth transition. And then you can just pop this on with your finger or you can use a tool if you like to use a tool. In my case, I'm gonna just push it on with my fingers, although I'm still not 100% sure I'm totally happy with that. Oof. So if you need the tool, the tool is more helpful for pulling them off than putting them on. And so this is a ball link tool. You can get these in various sizes, thicknesses of heads and different, um, you know, basically setups. So in this case, you can, you can prime a number of different ways, but this is usually what I do. I'll just get in there and just kind of pry it this way. Oops, slide it under and then pop it off. It is a lot easier than doing it without a tool when you have to take them off, but putting them on, it's not a big deal. Now I'm gonna go out half a turn because I felt like it just didn't quite have the alignment. Because what I was doing is I was feeling just the end and it wasn't like a holistic squareness. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna basically squish this onto there like that, okay? Now we've got a nice finish there, okay? So I can feel that all the way up and down the surface and now I have a mating surface to check against. See, front and end or inboard and outboard. All right, so now I'm gonna just go to, they showed it in 
from the end, but they showed three holes, so I'm gonna go in from the end like this. They also showed 10 millimeters of throw, so 10 millimeters of throw should be something that's pretty easy for us to see. And you're like, but Brian, you're doing ailerons right now. That is actually a good point. We shouldn't be doing ailerons yet. We're doing flaps right now. Why are we doing flaps right now and not ailerons? Because if you do ailerons right now, you may have to reverse the operation of the ailerons. And if you do reverse the operations, it's possible that they kind of go off center a little bit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm gonna just do this other flap first, okay? So now on this one, oh geez, that thing is so good, lordy, lord, lord. Well, that one probably won't pull off. Yeah, oh, by the way, check that. Okay, so we're going to the outermost hole. We're gonna flip that. Now I'm gonna hold this down to where it's level. And we actually, we're a little bit too much right now. So I gotta go in half a turn, check it. Nope, in half a turn more, check it. Ooh, that's pretty dang good. Okay, perfect. I like that. Now that gives us alignment here and here. Now we can go on to the ailerons. So all I'm gonna do is just hold this and then spin it. Oh, that hurts. Oh, good Lord. Jeez. So I'm gonna just use this tool to hold on to it and then I'm gonna spin it a little bit until it starts. Then I don't have to do that once it's in the control arm. Okay, so the control arm of the servo, I'm going down to the second hole just to kind of, you know, strike the balance between what the manual says and what I normally do. Three, four, five turns out, holding down, nope, not enough. Six, seven, eight, holding down. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, that's not, needs to go out a little bit more. There's nine, 10. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Held here, held here. That's good. That's perfectly fine. Now, don't be afraid of in disparity. It can be, well, hold on. I need to see if it's gonna roll. So funny thing about ailerons, you can do it up or down. Doesn't matter. That is incorrect. So it's going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna go to ailerons, click it. And now we can go the correct way. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip the plane around and we'll do the other side and then we'll bring the wing to the correct orientation so it's easy for you guys to see uh, at home. So we're in one hole from the end. I'm gonna just brace this and spin a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's probably, nope, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Good Lord, still on there, pulled hard, no change. That might be pretty dang close right there. Do you, that one's really like canted. Yeah, we can try it the other way and see if it improves. Okay, going in from the other side. Okay, yeah, good catch. Yep, that also changes our geometry a little bit. So mm -hmm. in, in, two halves. That's pretty good right there. Mm-hmm, I think that's good. That's where we're gonna call it good. That's gonna hurt. Some of these things, they go on really hard. Some of them don't. Okay, so it's on. Now we can move the ailerons. Yep, rolling that way, rolling this way. Okay, cool. So now might as well do the elevator and rudder. Then we'll quadruple check a few more times. We can also see the operation of the flaps, which is that's wow. barn doors. And also you'll note that we are out of throw. Touching. So we may need to back off how much we move those. So we'll look at that in a minute. But for now, let's continue on to the elevator and rudder. Now I need to manipulate these a few times just to kind of make them free. See how they're free now? Also, you don't want this side looser than this side. So definitely work it if you feel resistance. Same thing here, okay? Rudder, I don't know which way it needs to go, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to this real quick and just give this a couple of twists. Get that. And then I'm just going to the outside hole, I guess. I don't know what else to do. I'm not gonna measure, so yeah, that should be fine. Out, 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 out. Okay, now how do you tell if this is aligned? You have to look at the seam usually is a good idea as you look at that seam. You see that seam, how it's kind of tipped over to this side. Once I pull this out, you can see where it'd be lined up a little bit better, right about there. Okay, you can also flip the plane up if it helps. Uh, I think I probably overshot now. No, that's getting pretty dang good. There's half more. Mm, 
that's too much. Half back. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to grab this and pop it on. Oops, I did that backward. So folks, if you want to help support Brian Phillips RC, if we've helped you in some way on this video or another video someday, I don't feel like, is that square? It's kind of hard to tell. I feel like maybe I didn't get it. No, I don't know. It feels it like it's favored over there. It's weird. Sometimes it does that after you snap them in there just the way that the angles work out. I'm gonna go out one half more turn, and then I'll snap it down. So if you guys wanna help support the channel, the best thing you can do is buy the planes, radios, transmitters, batteries, things like that from the links in the video description below. Helps us to earn some small commissions from the manufacturers we work with, and also build clout with these manufacturers, distributors, hobby shops, and things like this. And that's how we make a living doing this. When I say a living, I mean part of, part-time job yeah something like that yeah you okay have a regular i have a real job, job. I, have, I have a real, a real job. adult job <laughs> okay all right so all the way out so if you guys do that it would be very helpful we have a family of six putting food on their plates okay so now how do you tell when this is level you're gonna have to get down here and sight down the length of it so i gotta go in a couple turns there's half and another half, that's gotta be dang close. Yep, another half, maybe even two. Mm -hmm. There's two, let's see how we look now. Mm, overshot, half back. Okay, so now that's where that goes. Sweet! Okay, so we have elevator, we have rudder, we have ailerons, now we gotta flip the plane upside down, or right side up, I should say and see if everything works the way we want it to, because obviously we need the control surfaces to move in the correct direction. That would be very critical on every plane that you ever get. So I'm just gonna flip this over and cable management's gonna be a Bearcat on this one. Ha <laughs> ha, Bearcat, this isn't a Bearcat. <laughs> By the way, where the heck is the antenna that goes there? Isn't there supposed to be an antenna on top? No, nope. evidently not, not, not on, on this picture. one. So we're just gonna drop that battery in there. We're not planning on using the 5004S, but we can at least see what it looks like uh, with that in there, it's gigantic. So elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps, okay. Y'all left, y'all right, sweet. Nice. Okay, so all the control surfaces are currently moving in the correct directions. And when we get this all buttoned up, then we'll check for stabilizer activity so that it's moving in the counter uh, rotational movement. So like if I were to do this, the rudder should move, that should move that way, it should move that way, it should move that way, and I am seeing it, which is good, and elevator should go up. So elevator up, elevator down, elevator up. A little bit harder to tell on that one. And then ailerons up, down, up, down. A little bit harder to see. If you can't see, here's a trick. If you need a helper, you may need a helper for this sort of thing. But what you can do is you can take your plane like this, you can put your hand on it and then roll it. Yep, down, yep, up, yep, down. Yep, up, yep, down. Yep, left, yep, right, definitely can feel that. So up, down, yep, up, down. You can't see it, but you can feel it, mm -hmm. okay? So that's definitely working the correct direction. Now also, I need to be careful not to actuate my gear because the gear go all the way forward. Now, I don't like that chirp noise I'm hearing when I like bump into something but there is actually a stabilizer involved, but that is sort of an unusual noise. So hopefully we don't have like a cable that's janked in there funny. All right, so now at this point, we should be able to unplug the receiver and start doing cable management. This is gonna be a Bearcat, like I said, and so as a result, we're gonna go ahead and get this battery out of the way, and let's talk about this for a quick second too. We have the wrong type of connector for most of the batteries that we're gonna use, okay? While that is annoying, I would assume have a bigger connector that I don't need, okay? Because that's higher quality. But what's annoying about that is it's, it's really hard to plug a small battery into a big connector. And so the 2200 4S is gonna have an IC3, not an IC5. And so obviously you can't plug those in, okay? So you have to build yourself an adapter, which we'll have to do at some point, or you have to cut off the end and put an adapter in there or you have to buy one, okay? So the easiest way to do it on a plane like this, if you know you're never gonna use this size, would be to build an adapter. 
The other thing that's nice is if you know this is the battery and you're gonna use at some point, you can actually come back a, an inch or so, clip it, and then you can build the correct pair of ends. Then you get an adapter out of the cable and the provided equipment, which is kind of a smart way of doing it if you run into that situation. So we're gonna pause, clean up some stuff, and come right back. All right, so we gotta try to get this rat's nest taken care of, and that is a big problem. And so we kind of run into this weird circumstance where we're halfway through ready, radio setup and we're halfway ready to actually fly the thing. And so we have to mark the CG at some point and we have to get the batteries in at some point. So it's kind of like, okay, it's got to happen at some point. So it's going to happen right now. So I'm thinking 3,250C 4S, of course, and then 2,200 100 C, which is a little bit overkill, but it just happens to be a really flat pack. So I'm going to go with this one for now. Um, if I look into this aircraft, what I initially see and kind of concerns me is just the fact that there's like not that much room. Okay. So we've got wires that go lengthwise, which, you know, we always have wires that go lengthwise, but these ones are going to be tangly dangly as you know what. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of get things on the correct side of each other and then that will help us to have better luck, hopefully. Okay, so as you can see, we've also got these Velcros that are down here. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to get those sort of out of the way. And maybe what I can do is I can, maybe I can reach those into my uh, office supplies sort organizer. Nope. And then also this cable, normally I would wanna leave it so I could plug it in but it's just like, honestly, it's in the way. There's too many cables in the way. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get rid of that. This receiver can actually be tucked back here without any issue or recourse, so long as we protect the cables. And you'll note that this one's not heat shrinked over the end of the leads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tape. I don't wanna actually mount this receiver. I'm gonna be putting some tape around it. Now, why am I putting tape around it instead of mounting it? Well, the reason I want to put tape around it is this is going to protect the receiver from agitation back there because we won't necessarily know what's happening back there. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you didn't get a scissors out, did you? Okay. Uh, no, just so we're just going to use some electrical tape. Now, electrical tape is heavy, and so you want to use it sparingly um, unless you want to waste capacity. I know it sounds like I'm being picky here, but the truth is it is it's just vinyl tape is heavy. Okay. So the only reason I care is I don't want these antennas to rip off or get damaged. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around it real gently. And I'm not even gonna press like super hard, but I do wanna pull and get a little bit of tension and just go like this, okay? And then I'm gonna take, and like I said, it's only like a wrap and a half, okay? And then I'm done, I'm done, I'm just gonna leave it. And then if I need to get in there sometime, the only issue I have with that is it might create a little bit of a trapped heat spot and these things can get warm, so just be aware of that. So now, because we have that controlled and protected, we do want to eventually get those diversity antennas at 90 degrees of each other, okay? So my next move is, you see how we have a shorter batch of cables and a longer batch of cables? So if you have enough length to loop one batch, it's gonna be too tight. So what we're probably gonna do is we're just gonna try to tuck everything that we have right here into one bundle and I don't know why, but people have said they like watching cable management in our videos. Again, I don't understand exactly why, but just watching me do it doesn't make yours look better. So take the time, do it on your plane. It's definitely a worthwhile cause, okay? So you see, all I'm doing is just looking for the neatest loop I can make. These ones are always gonna be a mess no matter what we do, so we'll have to come up with a different approach when we get ready to do that. So these ones are gonna be together and they're gonna to go to the back, okay? This one here is also gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna go under and then back around and brown is up in this case and then reattach, okay? So I'd like to have that attached to the sidewall at some point. And this one's kind of the same thing. I'm just noticing that it's tangled badly. And so I'm just gonna untangle it. The only way to untangle it sometimes is to undo the wire and wrap around, nope, that way. And you just have to, sometimes you have to take and go back and make the cable straight so it's not got 47 twists in it. And this one's got 47 twists in it and so then yellow is up. Okay, so there's that, there's that. 
And we're gonna be manipulating the battery here, so we wanna protect that area as best we can, okay? Now, I don't know if this battery is gonna be necessary or it's gonna end up being way too big or if we're gonna to wanna to go back to a 2200 4S or some configuration therein, okay? But what I am concerned about is I just wanna make sure I have everything secured in such a way that we can work on this. Because right here, you've got this humongous ESC and there's no room to put it in a, in a housing. So it's just flopping around in there. I do not like that at all. Um, I don't like it at all. It's not the end of the world either, but I don't like it, okay? So now these things can come up here and they can largely get out of the way by being taped or glued to the side. And that's one way. And then secondarily, I wanna get these wires so that they're bound together. But I don't wanna have a giant mess of wire over here because that's where it's gonna need to be clear. Also, I'm noticing that this could chase along the same side, okay? So I'm gonna actually pick a side and you can see there's a heat sink on one side and there's a, not a heat sink on the other side, okay? Well, heat sink on both sides probably. So I'm gonna just probably have to, yeah, can't make that. I have to just go like this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is now that we have established where everything needs to be, I can start zip tying these things up in bundles, okay? So the bundles are gonna be just like this. I'm gonna pull them sort of tight, you know, just so I know that they're all together. And I'm just gonna give that as little extra as possible. I'm gonna take my side cutters to it and I'm gonna clip. And we're just gonna go through the process here of sorting all the cables in such a way that everything is pulled into one assumed wire, okay? Instead of having like four. And then we can hopefully get those out of the way of the battery. Remember, a plane that's easier to load a battery into is a plane that you're gonna fly more often. I can promise you that. So now we're gonna take, and you can see we're getting a little bit better as we go. I should have tied that all together, so I am going to um, just undo the one I just did. You don't wanna have 475 zip ties in here. I promise you that will cause you problems. And um, it's just extra weight that you don't need. Doesn't really serve any purpose. So you don't wanna have a bunch of extra zip ties. Try to use one to do the job of two if you can. And don't skimp on zip ties because ties they're cheap and plentiful. Okay, so just get that extra weight out of there. All right, so now we've got this thing and it's gonna eventually be down here and you can see right where everything goes is right where we don't want it to be. So that kind of sucks, but what are you gonna do? Okay, so the other option is we glue it to the side and that's one real option that we could do. Also, I'd like to tie that again because I know we're gonna fight this. You can also use tape if you wanna save on zip ties or you don't have zip ties. Black tape is okay, but it is heavier. I have known, I have used clear tape before. I've used other different types of tape in the past. Just kind of whatever's lying around to be honest. Okay, so now this thing is gonna, you wanna kind of control where it's gonna be so it's out of the way for the battery. And I think unfortunately on this, we're gonna have to just glue the dang thing. Or, you know what we could do? Cause we're just gonna stuff that receiver back in there. We could just use the double-sided tape and attach this. Do we need to check CG first before you attach that? Mm, no. Okay. Here's why. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. And to be honest with you, I don't know. You just got to, at some point, you just got to throw caution in the wind and start making the plane a thing. If you don't, you'll just sit there forever trying to engineer it to death and you'll never get anywhere. So now that's to say, that's not to say you couldn't move this later too. Though. Right. Quite easy. Okay. Okay. So now I'm gonna slide this underneath the zip tie or underneath my little area of where the battery is gonna sit. And you can see that's just gonna be a real cluster when we go to use this. See, even with my careful planning, it's still gonna be tight and obnoxious. And then this is gonna go and wrap around. It's just gonna be in a terrible spot. So now we need to take all this and regrettably, I don't know if we're just gonna fold it together and then just give it like maybe one big zip tie. Okay. 
only used like probably four or five zip ties so far. In total, you know, maybe five or six. It shouldn't be too bad. Some people are gonna go crazy on zip ties. Some people are gonna try to shorten cables to make them the right length and waste a whole lot of time. You can do that if you want, but it's not necessarily going to improve your circumstances in my experience. That's when you end up accidentally making a mistake or you catch a mistake, one or the other, or both. Okay, so now that's done. I can just slide this in here and the diversity antenna, we're just gonna throw caution to the wind, obviously. And this, it'd be really nice if I had something to secure all those cables so they couldn't come undone since it's gonna be out of sight, out of mind. So I think what I'm gonna do is I am regrettably going to put another piece of tape around the plugs. So that's just the way I'm gonna do it. You don't have to do it that way. I've been known to use hot glue for this step and that keeps those plugged in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna go like this. Just pull a little bit of pressure on the vinyl and then I'm gonna get those uh, so that they are secured somewhat. Not a lot of pressure, just a little bit. You don't wanna pierce all that stuff. Okay. And there's, there's that, okay. So now what I wanna do is slide this in here to the best of my ability. And the easiest way I can see how to do that would be to probably grab and, you know, flip, flip these doohickeys upside down, hang on to one set of cable, and just kind of push that back. Now, because our servos don't have any linkages going through the wing, this should be a pretty safe spot to house all this crap because there's nothing back there other than the reflex and a big bundle of cables and now the receiver. And as you can see, if you really need to get that out, you can get it out. Now, you'll note that we have a diversity antenna that's sitting at the bottom of this puddle, and that's a terrible spot for a diversity antenna. This is gonna sit right next to the battery. But let's see how this canopy goes down. The canopy is gonna rest sort of in this area, but not totally in there. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to see if there's a way to get this diversity antenna to actually be potentially mounted here, okay? And then that would give me a, 40, uh, a 90 degree angle from the other one. Mm -hmm. okay. But I don't want that right where the battery is because it's gonna potentially interfere. And you can see this is gonna drop down, you know, three eighths of an inch down. So I can just tape that. I'm gonna try taping it. I don't know if I wanna use vinyl tape because I just feel like it's gonna be too hard to see it there. So I'm gonna go with clear tape. This may not stick great. And we've run into this before where we try this and then it just doesn't stick well because the mold release on these things. So this is just gonna be kind of out. And this one's gonna be up. And then we're just gonna tape the back portion, keep our thumb free. Oh, son of a biscuit lover, it's already popped out. And you don't wanna bend this stuff any more than you absolutely have to to get the job done because it is a uh, like a coax cable. If you kink it, it's not good on it. Okay, it'd be nice if I could take and just put like a skewer through, but I'm afraid this is pretty thin material here. So we're gonna try to tape it right here, okay? okay. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of a bend, not a kink, but a bend, and then that's gonna force it to about that length. We're just gonna pull off just enough tape to reach side to side. Hopefully we don't overlap too much because it's going to make it work like crap. And just pushing it down. And I think we're going to be fine there. See, I've got a little extra tape. So we'll just take and cut this. And then I should be able to rip it nicely right down. Then I can wrap the tape under the bottom edge and around the top edge. So now we have a diversity antenna in the diversity attitude or whatever direction it should be. So we have one here and one here, okay? Now, it looks better, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. Is it, is, it, is it good enough? I don't know. We're gonna find out when we go to fly it and we find out how frustrating it is to take in and out the battery. I would really like to see some sort of a channel for this type of wiring because it's a real pain in the neck and there's just no getting around it, okay? Also, these straps, 
I don't know the best way to organize them, but I think we're gonna put that through and we're just gonna go ahead and slide a battery in here and then we'll mount, uh, we'll mark the CG at some point here. I, I wanna try it on 3200 4S because I think that's gonna be a good size because these smart batteries tend to be a little bit lighter than some of the non-smart batteries. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back here. Again, I don't know how far back I need to have it. This is just guesswork at this point. But then I'm gonna slide it over the top, pull it tight, and then I'm gonna push it down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Now you'll notice that my power lead is strapped in there. It's not necessarily by plan, it's just the way it worked out. I don't know if the canopy is gonna go on just quite yet. And you'll notice I'm not sliding through that because you can't pull them tight because they don't slide free, okay? So this will definitely reach and give us a pretty good spot to hide our battery. But is it gonna allow us to put the canopy down? I don't know, because there's a pretty big reach on the bottom. See, and that's just an antenna. So let's see what happens if we do this. Let's go like this. See if we can move the battery over just a hair. Now I'm going vertical, we could go flat too, potentially. And as you can see, we've got that down. Now this is the wrong end. So there may be an adapter, but the adapter is going to be up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and simulate that this is the correct connector and in the correct position. Let's see if this drops down. Ooh, we are so dang close. I don't know if we're hitting here. Kind of hard to tell. There's just a lot of bulk here for no reason. Mm -hmm. So normally I don't like trimming these things if I don't have to, but on this one, I just don't think it's adding anything. Um, it's just thickness here that doesn't need to be there, okay? So I'm just gonna come in here and just cut this out. My X-Acto knife only reaches so far, so I'll just do it in two cuts, and I think this little piece is gonna do it. And if you're afraid of cutting uh, foam like this, don't be afraid, it's nothing new. We do this all the time. It's really not a big deal. And now we've got just a little bit more clearance on the back. I think that's where we're hitting. Ooh, we're getting dang close. So I don't know if maybe this part needs to come down just a hair. So let's try that. Okay, so just using the depth of the blade as my gauge or my jig. I'm gonna go like this. Do the exact same thing over here. Just walk the X-Acto knife down to where my other cut point is. So if you guys are used to trying to figure this stuff out on your own or you're brand new to the hobby and you're struggling to get the help you need, you're in the right place here on Brian Phillips RC. We've been doing this for years. We'll keep doing it and we love to have you. So thanks for being here with us. If you wanna help support us, buy these things from the links in the video description below and we'll keep doing it. Also, if you wanna support us in other ways, we have Patreon and PayPal. Special thanks to our Patreons who are with us monthly with support and gifts financially. But we still think the best way is to just buy the planes that you do like, obviously not ones you don't. We know everybody has a taste and flavor for different planes. Oh yeah, that's good there. That's real good there. Yeah. Okay, so we got that. So we just carved this, this little section here and gained about a quarter inch or so. And I feel like we're pretty good there. And this is a lot bigger battery than they claim we need. So let's go ahead and drop that down. I don't like how hard it is to pull this battery though. I do this on virtually every plane that we make or put together or build or whatever we want to call this. I'm gonna go ahead and go back like this to a flat. And then I'm just gonna double this back onto itself. Oh man, I don't feel like I'm gonna get enough purchase on this. Let's see. It doesn't need to be long, guys. It just needs to be a little teeny bit so you can grab the tail. And this is an actual inlet, so that could buzz there. So I don't know if that's acceptable. I think it might have to be long just so that it goes up over. I don't think we can do it there. I think we're gonna have to do it a different way if we do it. Hmm. I think if we're gonna do it on this plane, what we would probably have to do is, you know, maybe something like this that might be mistaken as an antenna. I don't know. I'm not sure. We might just have to grin and bear it. 
Could you put it on the side? Nah, we'll just, we'll just, we can hold here. It's actually not bad. Okay. See, there's, there's support inside of there. there. Generally, we don't have support under the canopy. And so we're just going to pull it there. That's fine. Okay. I can live with that. I think that's reasonable. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark CG before we continue any further. In fact, we're going to pause, clean up, and come right back. Okay, so we have a battery with an IC3, right? We're down in our basement. This is an IC5, which obviously won't work. But the only difference here is the fact that we have actually got an EC5 upstairs, which is this type, this style of connector. Okay, it's going to be almost the same. But what we can do now is we can build either the right end to receive this plug onto the plane, which would be the easiest thing to do, or we can build an adapter. I like the adapter, but I got to admit, it is hard to build these adapters because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to go from something huge like this to something relatively smaller so that you can fit through this type of connector. And so it doesn't work very well, notwithstanding the fact that you can sometimes take like one of these that you've cut off from an existing plane somewhere else and you can just use that and that gets you through. The trouble is these leads have to be long enough to pass through the entire body of this type of connector in order that you can solder on the other side mm. and then pull them back through because these things snap in from the front back, if I recall, okay? Now, I'm gonna test this because if you do it right, it works. If you do it wrong, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna test my theory and I'm just gonna grab hopefully the right screwdriver here. Here's a flat bladed screwdriver. Now listen, you're just listening for a pop. Okay, so it's not wanting to go. So if I can go this way, that's even better. Okay, so if you can go this way, they are hard to snap in. So you see, I tried both directions. Now I'm gonna try this direction. See, nothing. So that's why I don't like building these connectors, okay? They're difficult to build and they are hard to ensure that they're gonna be right when you're done building them. Okay, so I've never been a big fan, but you see, that's what you're gonna have to do. Now that's easier said than done when you've got no wire on there. It's not so bad. But wait till you have a wire in there. And then right. how are you supposed to solder that now? You can't solder it when it's assembled. You have to solder it first and then pull it back through. So I am going to attempt to pop this off and I'm gonna do it the wrong way so you can see how not to do it, even though it's gonna work. Okay, so you're gonna line this up. You're gonna put it against a softer type of material like wood and then just just give it a tap, give it a tap. And look how hard that is. See, we're actually drilling into the wood now. So that is why I don't like these. Now, what's better is if you can work with IC5s and IC3s, because then all you have is pants that need to be released like this. Okay, so the way I ended up pounding this thing out is I shot it into another connector, which seemed to work pretty good. Um, and that's one way you can force those things out. It is kind of challenging and pretty frustrating. Let's just say that's why I hate EC connectors. I've always hated them. I hate them with a passion. I hate building them and I only build them when I absolutely possibly have to. And then when I do build them, the ICs are so much better. XT60s are so much better. And now I've got a damaged connector because of course I was trying to get those apart. Again, my bad, but still really frustrating. Okay, so this again is gonna plug in at the airplane as an adapter, okay? We have to put the pins in there because these, we have to put sockets in there. And now we have to just make sure we didn't destroy that one, which doesn't feel like we did, thank goodness. But as you can see, they get marred and it's very easy to do that. So I'm gonna use that on another plane. And then I'm gonna get one and I'm gonna get two, okay? So you need two cylinders like that. And you have to pass your wires through. Now I have this old connector from an old battery that died, but as you can see, this wire is, even though it's a big size, that will fit through here just fine. 
okay? The problem is, now I have to feed that back through on the other side. And how do you do that exactly? Well, the short answer is you basically don't, okay? So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to pull some of this over the end and I've got my soldering iron a million degrees now because I've been fighting that for a minute off camera. I'm going to clean this up and then I'm going to desolder this because I don't need this little stupid doohickey on here. So I'm going to dip the flux, get a little bit of flux on there. It should help to transmit the heat more efficiently. And as you can see, it should heat this thing up. Of course, this wire is going to get to like a million degrees and I'll have to hold on to it. So that's always awkward. Okay, so now I've got that cleaned off. And really at this point, I'm gonna cool the lead by holding it against this metal surface so I don't have to fight it. Now I'm gonna get some side cutters and eventually we'll go to strippers and I'm just gonna cut this back here just in front of the connector because we don't need very much to work with, okay? So once that's cut, then I can preserve that for later use. And then I can slide off the heat shrink, which if I was careful, I would have pulled the whole heat shrink back and reused the heat shrink. In fact, I can still reuse this heat shrink, which is one of the tricks of the day. You can heat that up and slide it off. I'm not gonna waste my time on it. So at the end of the day, we need enough to be able to slide this through the positive side. It's labeled as such positive. So the red's gonna go on here. The black is gonna go on here. And you're like, okay, Brian, but you still haven't established if you can get it through there true and i don't want it to be this long but that might be what's in the cards for us and as you can see it's quite difficult to cut them when they get big like this even with a nicer pair of side cutters with a little bit of power to them okay so we've cut those we made a nice square end now what i need and you're like that is the weirdest looking thing ever yes it is weird i agree okay now i have to see if i can get this sucker to go through here and we have to make sure we ensure our polarity is correct positive is up in this case and you're like, how are you ever gonna make that happen? The answer is you may not be able to, okay? So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to make this work <laughs> and it's probably not going to. So I gotta get some strippers. I'm gonna strip back some of the lead. And, and you're like, why don't you just use a smaller wire, Brian? Well, I probably could and I may end up having to do that. But what I want to do is I want to see if I can get that to go just bare. Yes, I can. Okay. So what I can do is I can probably tin this lead and I might be able to get it to force through and then I can slide this back. That's what we're going to try next. So I'm going to get some flux heated up. I'm going to dip the flux. I'm going to get it into the wire. That's all. That's a big wire. Okay. Then I'm going to take some of this rosin core solder. And I'm just going to pull this off. And yes, it's gonna take a little bit to, to get this thing tinned. Nice clean tip. Get that contact so you've got solder going in. And what I wanna do is I wanna tame all these little wires, okay? This doesn't need to be perfect, but I, I need to make it so I can try to pull it through or push it through. And once it's pushed or once it's pulled, I'm actually gonna hold it against this metal again so I can cool it down quick because this is just gonna act as a heat sink here. You could also use your clamp or something like that. But these things get hot really quick, so be careful, kids. Don't do this without your parents' approval. All that stuff, all that stuff, excuse me. Okay, so obviously we're gonna have to strip back quite a bit more to get it through. And that's where it gets complicated, okay? because you can only work with so much length, you don't want your adapter to be four miles long. Okay, so how do you get this thing through? Here's a trick that may work for some of you. Do you see what I just did? I pulled the wire through the sheath. Now we have a naked sheath down here, okay? There's no wire in there. And so this is where you have to get a little bit creative when you're building one of these bigger connectors like this. This is not kosher. Typically you'd use a small enough wire to go through sheath and all. Okay, now we've got that thing exposed. So now I can just pull that through. And as you can see, we don't want a cold solder joint. And a cold solder joint would be where we don't have good contact or we maybe don't have enough solder built up. But you see, I'm naked there. And then I'm just going to pull a little bit more through with hopes that I can push the, the thing back when I'm done. Okay, no guarantees it's going to be long enough, but I think we're about right. Okay, so remember, all we got to do is do this twice perfectly and not make any mistakes. 
So super easy. Great. That's why I love these connector adapters. Okay, so you can see right there, we've got a bigger connector than we do. And, and the problem is you have to keep this little lip here clean. When your solder is flowing, you can't flow into this or it won't adapt into your connector. Oh. Yep. What a pain, right? That's why I hate E-Flight connectors, EC, EC5s. They're one of the worst connectors. So now if you get an IC5, you don't have half of these problems. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and use one of these toothpicks, get some flux. I'm gonna put it inside the hole not on the outside. I'm gonna try my best not to get it on the outside. Now there's a few ways you can do this so that it's easier. You can actually take an XT60 because these are the same size holes and you can use that to hold the pins, okay? Then you can take, if only I had something like that. Something like that, hidden by a fly swatter. How did a fly swatter get in the way of my tools? Like, who's, the who's in charge of this place? <laughs> okay, so that's clamped. I'm gonna put this out of the way. Now, normally I would suggest when you do something like this, you keep a tidy workspace because it's a lot safer and you're less likely to catch something on fire and there's a lot less bad language. <laughs> that's my mic that's gonna die, not yours. Yes, exactly. And so really, once you're done with this and you can see, you end up with all the same types of connectors that you burn through. So I've got millions of types of connectors here. And I'd like to have heat shrink fed on here, but obviously you're not gonna do that. It's gonna get way too hot. It's just gonna sink down, okay? Get that flux nice and toasty. I'm just going into some nice brass cleaner, tip cleaner. I'm gonna go a little bit of actual tip cleaner. And then I'm gonna get that nice and toasty and I'm just gonna a little bit of that. Oh no, I got it on my connector, what a mess. Okay, so I'm gonna let that go real hot real hot because remember you got to get through all this crap and then i i'm gonna this is so dirty i'm gonna clean it again i'm gonna go back in take another dip take another dip and then i go back to it okay it's gonna take a while to solder this because there's just this is a thin type and i was trying to avoid dripping on that so i'm gonna just come over here i don't really care if i drip on this that surface is wood this is like a Another type of material. What is this, Formica or something? Yeah, something like that. And actually your mic is gonna die pretty soon. Okay, well when that dies, I guess we're done. So then I've got flux in here already, but remember I gotta keep, I gotta keep this flux inside. I, I don't wanna get flux everywhere. So I'm just gonna heat this up. Okay. So now I've got that inside, but not outside. That's important. I'm trying to heat it and bake it off. See how that's working? Now I can take this thing. Remember, I have to hold this stupid connector like this and then try to get this to go. Ah, my tip is getting too dirty. So folks, this is... Uh, one of the unusual times when there's just, the better way would be to probably just do it on a plane because electrically speaking, you don't wanna to go to a smaller connector like this. It's not a good idea because that's gonna be your current limiting step there. So I'm trying to get this heated up so that I can slide it in, but you have to slide it in and keep all those little conductors right where they need to be. And as you can see, then you end up doing something like that. And look what happened, guys. I dropped the connector, and that's what's so easy to do. Okay. So now that I've dropped the connector, I have to probably go ahead and... I mean, I can just leave it out this time. Nope, I can't. I have to slide it through first. Because otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to struggle with this for a little bit until I get sick of it. And then I'll end up doing something different but just make sure you get into your positive side, okay? So there's the positive side. Feed that through. That thing's pretty toasty still. And it is very easy to get a cold solder joint. I'm just telling you right now, even if you're good at this, and I'm pretty good solderer, so this is definitely not an easy thing to have to do. And that's why I'm like, FMS, why are you putting the wrong type of connector on here? And they would say, it's not the wrong type of connector, you're using the wrong type of battery. And I'm like, no, wrong. 
Wrong. Come on, get in there. See, now I'm trying to force this giant tip into this small hole. And it's probably never going to quite be right. So you can see what's going to happen. Then you're going to drop it and you're going to be screwed again. So now I have to make the difficult decision, which I don't like to do, of trimming off a little bit of this thickness. And yes, that's still a compromise that's better than going to a totally smaller gauge wire. Okay. In my opinion, it's still, it's not, it's not electrically kosher. It's not the way you would normally conduct electrical business. So I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay. Now I'm going to flux that up. I'm going to get this thing nice and toasty and see if I can get these wires to go in this time. And as you can see, the problem that you run into is look how impossible it is to get this stupid thing to go in. And you can see that's where we run into problems here, folks, is that these things are just terrible to work with. And even when I've got it tinned nicely and everything, you can't get solder into that ring or you won't ever get it into the connector. And so you have to be very careful the way you do it. So, and this is going to get nice and toasty. So you have to do that. Now, this is the easy side. The hard side is the other side, okay? Because here, the other side, you're going to have to do the same thing in a few minutes. So exactly how the heck are you going to do that? That's a great question, really. That's a great question. And so you can buy these ends, you can buy these adapters, and that's probably what you ought to do if you're not reasonably good at soldering. And I'm, I'm reasonably good at soldering, and I'm still having a heck of a time with this. So I need to get flux on here again. That's one of the common problems. You got you see there, and then you make a big mess, and then you, you get your flux down the side. You got to heat it up. You get a nice clean connector then. See that? I don't even care if I melt the XT60. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is I have to do this task at all. Okay, so I'm going to press this down. Of course, my tip is getting black. You see that, guys? So that's not really good at all. So you see, how am I going to guarantee that I'm going to get a good connection here, guys? I'm just not seeing that happen, folks. How the heck are you going to do that? So we're going to pause and come back. All right, so then you end up doing something like this, and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go down to this little dinky gauge from this big gauge. I'm going to go from 12 gauge down to whatever this crappy gauge is. Yeah, pretty much that's how you're going to do it. Fortunately, you're not going very far, so there hopefully won't be too much trouble as a result of the adapter. Now, we've done this a million different times, and we've had reasonably good success with it, but that's usually what I end up doing is I have to go down to a smaller wire, and you'll just have to imagine what it'd be like if I soldered these successfully. It's not near as bad when you have the right size wire because you can feed it through, okay? So in this case, I am going to take and just get this pulled off, this little heat shrink end. And then I've got, as you can see, an area where somebody else had probably soldered this. So I'm going to go ahead and desolder it by getting it dipped into the flux, heating it up, and just taking the end off. And you can see all the crap coming out, all the corrosion and nastiness. That's, I mean, it was actually not a terrible solder joint. Oh yeah, it was. It was totally terrible. So we're gonna take that out, hold it to the ground and pull out the tip, okay? Then we're gonna dip it in the flux and we're just gonna go until that thing is clean. And then all sorts of nasty smells coming out of it. And as you can see, eventually you're gonna get to where it's nice and shiny and it's actually clean, chemically cleaned. And you can use alcohol. I like to use isopropyl alcohol because it's cheap. You get it in the medical spot. You don't get it at the electronic spot. 15%. Okay, so once that's done, you come and take another dip. Clean your tip, and then you just take a second. We're going to clean this up and come right back. So now you can see that's fed through. Was that the way it was? It needs to pull back through like this? Yes, and then you like popped it up. Okay. Yep, so now I can take and do more conventional means to actually build the rest of this connector. And this is kind of a, a simpler process with the smaller wire. It makes it a lot less frustrating, uh, but it's still, still real pain in the neck. And ultimately you're going down to a very small gauge because that's the way these connectors were designed in the first place. So what you have to do with something like this is generally you have to find the pin side 
or a connector that happens to have this already built onto it, which is the best way of doing it. And so in my case, I have probably, yeah, this one has a pin on it, so I can use that to hold it. And that'll help me, oops, wrong size, guys. So we can also clamp onto it with something like this so we can dissipate heat and that's gonna give us a better outcome, but you don't wanna deflect this and cause it to be hard to plug in. So I'm gonna use my crappy little, whatever junky brand this is. This is probably Tool Shop, guaranteed for life to fail. And it's very terrible. Okay, great, but that'll still sink the heat for me. And so as I'm soldering, it makes it quite easy. So now all I have to do is clean the tip, prep the tip, get a little flux going, and then I need to get my solder and solder in tin, tin the end. And it's quite easy now to do this. When you use the right size wire, it makes it a lot easier. But really the right size wire is kind of counterintuitive because the right size wire is bigger. So now I'm just gonna go into here like this and just fill it with solder just about. Okay, so now that's filled with almost all solder. And then this is plus to plus, verify my polarity one last time. And then here we go, we're just gonna get this heated up. The camera crew is not gonna move obviously because that would be probably to give you a better angle from like where you can actually see. I'm just gonna leave this like that. I know that there's stuff in the way, I can't move it. I assume you'd go behind me so you're not blocking my light. Okay, so that, now we're, we've got that definitely in a molten lava-esque state. And we're going to let that set for a second until it calms. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the negative and we'll come back when we're done with the negative. Okay, so I'm just using alcohol on a cloth and just trying to get this little bit of flux off of there. You see that stuff there? You want to try to get that stuff off. Um, and then you can see we've got a nice silver connection, very strong, and that'll pass lots of current through. And then all we have to do is just one last time verify polarity, 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 polarity. And then we can pull these back. And then you have to snap them in, which is a real pain in the neck. And so I've seen that you can do it a number of different ways, but this is usually about the best way. And I'll hold something like this against my belly and then press. And it's scary because like <laughs> there's not really a lot to stop it and so sometimes it's uh pops a little bit all at once there it goes so that's in and then we have to do the other side i'm just lined up on the edge of the counter and then pop it in and there it's there you have it there's your adapter easy as that guys super easy fun stuff yeah it's one of the best parts of the hobby okay so you plug this in and there you go now you can plug in your your plane so we'll see you upstairs. All right, so we got our adapter built. As you can see, it's right here. It's when we built downstairs. We're gonna plug it in the battery. We're gonna level the plane. We're gonna plug it in the plane, okay? Everybody's happy, the adapter works. Hypothetically, we're waiting for the thing to initiate before we get our hands in a dangerous spot. The reason it's plugged in for the center of gravity test is because I wanna make sure my adapter is accounted for because it is not nothing. Okay, so that's tucked in nicely. It's not perfect, but it's dang good considering what all we started with, and there you go. Now, CG is 65 to 70 millimeters. We're gonna hurry and get this marked. It's from the leading edge. So 65 to 70, right? Yep, 65 to 70 from the leading edge. Looks like we're gonna go right here because we've got that nice mold detail. Mold the detail. Okay, so there's 65 to 70. Okay, so we've got the caliper set to 70 now. Come back here and I'm kind of siding down the length of the wing to get my mark. And then this one's gonna be right on the N. Okay, so now I'm gonna take and mark this with my black marker to showcase where the holes are easily and so I can find them a little bit better, but I can also feel them. And that's usually how I test center gravity. It's very simple. Everything is ready to rock and roll. Mike's still on, right? So good. Okay, so I'm gonna take and flip the plane upside down, 3200, 
4S on the back holes. Nose heavy on the front holes, probably gonna be nose heavy too. Actually, we're tail heavy, so we do balance. That's between the holes perfectly, and that's a pretty big battery. So all I'm gonna say is we got lucky, let's show you where it is, and let's mark it right now. This is 4S 3200, 4S 3200, Usually mark it here, 4S, 3200, and that's a 50C, okay, with the wire going forward and an adapter. So there you have it, guys. I don't know if we're gonna fly it on 4S, 3200, or if we're gonna fly it on 2200, but we're gonna fly it on one of them and get a load of these beautiful gear one last time before our video goes kaput. We appreciate you guys watching these long format videos on Brian Phillips RC. If you wanna help support our channel, definitely buy these planes from the links in the video description below. It's the best way you can support us financially. But if you insist on buying at local hobby shop or from somewhere else, uh, then we have PayPal and Patreon available if you'd like to support us in that way. But as always, we appreciate you being here. We want you to be watching, liking and subscribing. If you haven't already done that, please do that and click the bell for notifications. It'll help you know when new content's coming. And there is a ton more content. So this is going to be releasing approximately one minute before the maiden flights. And we hope to have them up just as soon as possible, although it's been super windy and what a beauty. Oh, by the way, we haven't even showed you throttle. That's 50%. I can't go full throttle in here. It's That's going to be great. too nuts. So guys, <laughs> thanks for watching. FMS, good plane. Get the adapter better. I hate having to build adapters. Linkages, no, no please put linkages on, okay? And then what was the other problem? Oh, no LEDs. But this is a small plane, yep. LEDs, e, you know, I'll take it or leave it. You get into the bigger planes, I really do want them, but on this, I think we're good. Also, I just wanna say, what a beauty. P39 Cobra, what a cool plane. We like to see the weird stuff once in a while, so we hope you guys enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Stay tuned so much more from Brian Phillips RC.